All right, the next kind of behavior we're going to talk about are called simulation behaviors. Simulation behaviors replicate or simulate the way real objects in the real world interact with one another. And so, for example, I'll start off with something really nice and simple. Select my object, go to my behaviors pop-up under simulations, and I'm just going to start by choosing gravity. Pretty obvious, gravity is just going to make the object fall, right? So we have this object, it's, being, it's falling, now it's going to fall as fast as our behavior is long in the timeline. We can also increase the acceleration. So we can adjust the acceleration to give a sense that it is falling more accelerated, you know, the way gravity works. So there's a nice little gravity thing, but let's now add a second object. I'm just going to go ahead and add a little rectangle here and put that at the bottom. And now with this object, let's apply another behavior called repel. So in the simulations category, I'm going to say repel, and that's going to push the other object away. So even though the gravity is making it fall, the repel is pushing it away. Let's lower our influence there, just so it's a little bit lower like that. And now the gravity is pulling it down, but the closer it gets to the object, the more it's being pushed away. And it pushes it away, and then when it gets far enough away, the gravity starts pulling it back down all over again. So this is a use of co a combination of a couple of simulation behaviors. Just imagine how tricky it would be to actually animate this with keyframes, let alone making adjustments along the way, like, oh, that went a little too far there, but like, you know, but like making subtle adjustments to how strong that the reaction of that bouncing is. And, you know, let's uh, lower my drag. It's a little... And, you know, it's just basically now I'm sort of making that little object hover there until it gets far enough away from the center that it can fall. It won't even happen in this little time frame. Now, if I select the gravity behavior, you can see the movement. Remember that red path? We can see the path it's going to take, which is kind of cool. So we can see exactly what we're going to get depending on the combination of these behaviors. The behaviors are interacting with one another. If I delete the gravity here, and instead let's apply a vortex. Now what's going to happen is the circle is acting as a vortex. The other object's going to circle around it. So here, let's, uh, I'm just going to move this guy down a little bit. We can see the, the bar being vortexed around the circle, right? If I zoom out a little bit, we can see its path. In fact, if we select the rectangle, we can see the path it's on. But if let's, let's go ahead and modify that vortex. I'm just going to increase the drag slightly, and now what's going to happen is if I select it, you can see the path. It's going to create a little spiral where it vortexes in on our circle. 